What's going on guys, I'm Wildheart and today we are gonna have a little bit of a different video from what you are used to. I was trying really hard to find someone covering this topic on YouTube but I didn't succeed with it. So today I'll do a comparison between regular League of Legends player and elo boosters. I mean all the players rank below master tier when I'm speaking about the regular players. What is elo boosting? It's the process of elevating a game account ratings through the services of a more experienced player in order to achieve a higher elo rating desired by the initial user. Most League of Legends players desire to play in the highest tiers of competitive play. However, it's hardly possible for gamers to fulfill this desire because they are often caught up with real-life responsibilities. Others lack motivation, skill or even time to attain the highest ranks. There are also people who firmly believe in elo hell or the way people call it nowadays loser's queue. I mean, people prefer to believe anything to find excuses why they can't win rather than learning how to maximize the chances of winning the game. In order to make up for all those lacks, people are hiring elo boosters to rank up for them. Is it common to get to play with an elo booster? Oh, absolutely. On an average, you're gonna get to play with or against a booster every 200 games. Let's not waste a second more and dive right into the topic. It's not a secret to anyone that most of League players who play the game are playing to win. Some people say, I'm playing for fun, I don't care about winning. But hey, is there any fun playing the game if you are only losing? As a competitive person, I think there is none. As a regular League of Legends player, I motivate myself with positive emotions I'm obtaining when I'm carrying the game, which leads to winning the League points that at the end of the day make me even happier. The downside of it is that I'm getting negative emotions when I'm not doing much in the game and losing it. But at this point, it is what it is, right? League is a gamble at some point, and regardless how good you are, you can't win at all. So yeah, for me, the key points of winning as a representative of a regular players group is the joy of winning itself. League points that I get when I'm winning and the moments when I create a huge play for my team that can turn the tide of victory to the right side. On the other side, boosters. What is the key motivation of a booster to play and win most of the games? The answer is simple. Money. As a regular league player, you usually have life outside of the game, and at least your job is not going to be a game. Well, it's completely different in the case of a booster. You win means you have money, you lose means you lose money. So at this point we are bringing gambling to a brand new level. Your stomach is always the best motivator to do something, as if you didn't do well in the games as a booster, you're gonna have no money means no food, and even though it sounds a bit sad, it's probably the strongest motivation to play the game well. By the way, we are currently running a contest in our Discord server the goal of which is to score as many takedowns as you can during one week. So sign up and don't get the chance to win $20 worth of ride points on any server. The link will be attached below the video. There are many people who don't think that the amount of time you play can have any impact. There is also a very old Korean concept that you need to play 20 games a day to become a better player. That's a wrong statement obviously as if you play 3 games and do your absolute best in each of them, there is no chance you will have energy for 5 more tryhard games. We don't even want to talk about playing 10 plus games as it's just too much to be played in one session. If we speak about regular league players, they don't really aim to play a certain amount of games a day. I feel like an average league player place whenever they can or they want. On the other hand, we have boosters. How much do you think the booster plays? Well, that's what I found on one of the most popular elo boosting sites when I googled recruiting requirements. Judging from what I know about elo boosting for European and NA servers, no one will really want to hire you below Grandmaster, unless an employee who is working for this boosting service for quite some time can vouch for you and assure the admins of the service that you are a trustworthy person. Speaking of the amount of time you have to contribute to the booster job, if you're claiming the order it's 5 to 8 hours and honestly that's not a limit at all there are boosting order types that are marked with the priority tag which sometimes can enforce booster to play for 10 to 12 hours a day what is 12 hours a day if we convert it to games well it's about 17 games including the queue time dodges of your teammates sometimes you're gonna dodge the games as well because the draft isn't playable and yeah even though you're a booster you're not guaranteed to win at all so sometimes you will just overwork to finish the order faster because probably the customer who is happy with your service will tip you for a great job. So if we have to compare the amount of time contributed to the game daily, we'll figure that an average booster will probably play like 4 times more games than an average league player. Personally, I prefer the regular player sessions, as they do not obligate you to have a certain amount of time or games played daily. Which is cool, as it doesn't cause you any unnecessary stress while boosting is exactly opposite. If you are taking the order, you got to spam the games. You got to play a lot, like really a lot. Also keep in mind that if you are losing or even maintaining the 50% win rate means that you are 
basically wasting a day, as boosting is only rewarding if you move upwards. Living in such an extreme workspace can quickly cause a burnout, as obviously there will be some days where you're going to have a 50% swing rate and sometimes I'm sure it will be lower, especially when you're already burnt out. Given that, we can sum up that even though it sounds cool to make money playing the favorite game, sometimes it can be extremely challenging to do that job well on a constant basis. I think it would be appropriate to say that regular players gameplay may vary based on their ranks, but the main idea is that the lower ranked player is less likely to follow so called rules to grind. While regular players don't really have a specific amount of games they play daily, boosters always play in a sprint mode. They got a certain amount of games they have to win in order to complete the order, so they are building a plan on how many games they need to do in order to finish it, and if it's doable in one seat, they will definitely try to do it. Simply saying, they got to do a never ending sprint daily, because they need to try hard all the games they play, so they win most of them, but there is no milestone where they can stop, as this will reduce their income. Also, regular players are usually coming to a game without a strict plan of what to do while trying not to take too many risks. Once again, boosters are exactly opposite. Boosters are always looking for an opportunity to cheat the enemy, moreover, they are rarely going for low risk plays. Their style is high risk, high reward, while the reward probably is not even that high. Seriously, those guys are the most risky to play with, as they don't follow regular rules how to play the game, while they build their own little world every game they play. Another pattern that I noticed is that boosters don't really care about dragons unless it's third or fourth drake, and the game can be lost soon enough if they don't join the team fight. Those guys are always trying to maximize their gold gain to get an early item lead so they can snowball the game starting from the laning phase. At this point, boosters only value turret plates, heralds, and kills. So, in my opinion, champions that regular players are maining are completely random, as when I'm coaching someone from bronze to silver, it's very common to see them playing 3 to 4 different positions and like 30 champions, which obviously is impossible to master at the same time. Starting with gold and higher, this issue is usually gone, however, it still happens to me to meet someone who has that issue from time to time. By the time regular players reach diamond rank, they usually have decided what role they main and what champions they want to play seriously, which is usually limited to 3 to 5 champions. Let me know in the comment section below the video what you think is a better method of grinding out of those two and why. I am convinced that this is the best way to learn the game and play the game effectively, when you limit yourself with a certain amount of champions and only pick them as long as some of them are not getting nerfed to the ground, so you need to find a new champion to main. So I went to one of the most popular booster sites and here is what we can find there. Evidently we can see that they are one checking champions to the top level of competition regardless if the champions or the strongest items for them are getting nerfed. Aside of that, it's very important to point out that all three of those champions that boost your swan trick are fairly great to 1v9 the game, especially if you get one kill early on and know how to transit it to a bigger lead. That's a wrap for now, hope you enjoyed the video and will use this subscribe button as intended. Catch you later!